Hi class, how are you today? Applesauce. The learning target for today is to simplify monomials while multiplying and dividing. So what we're doing today is we're reviewing how to multiply and divide monomials. So we did this last year and now we're going to do it again this year. So this is just a review. You're not learning anything that you didn't learn last year. However, a lot of people struggled on it. It was at the end of the year, so I want to make sure we review how to do this. So, you're at a 3 if you can simplify monomials. 2, you can simplify monomials when there are no negative exponents. 1, you can simplify monomials when there are no coefficients. Remember, coefficient is the number in front of the variable. And zero, you cannot simplify monomials. All right, so we're going to review the properties of exponents. So first, when you are multiplying two variables with the same base, that means the number being raised to exponents is the same. So they're both x's. If it was both y's or uh, something like that, that's fine too. But if one is one variable and the other is a different variable, then you can't do it. So if this was an x and this was a y, can't combine them. Okay? So, we have x to the m times x to the n. When you multiply variables, you add the exponents. An example would be x to the 8 times x to the 3 is x to the 11. So you add the exponents here. So next we have when you raise an exponent to another exponent, what you do is you multiply the exponents. So x to the m to the n is x to the m times n. An example of that is x to the 8 to the 3rd is x to the 24th, times, because 8 times 3 is 24. Next, when you divide variables, you subtract the exponents. And it's always the top minus the bottom. So, x to the 8 over x to the 3rd, 8 minus 3 is 5, so x to the 5th. Next is when you raise a variable to a negative exponent, you bring it down to the bottom of the fraction. If there's no fraction, you just do 1 over and bring it to the bottom of the fraction. So example here, x to the negative 8 would be 1 over x to the 8. And just a note, back with the dividing, if the bigger number is on bottom instead of on top, so if you do the subtraction and instead it's 3's on top and 8's on bottom, that would give you x to the negative 5, which would be 1 over x to the 5. So whenever you do division, you want to make sure that if the bottom exponent is bigger, then that stays on bottom. So if you raise a fraction to an exponent, you're raising each number in the fraction to that exponent. So if you have x over y to the eighth, it's x to the eighth over y to the eighth. If you raise a fraction to a negative exponent, that flips the fraction. It gives you the reciprocal. So if you take x over y and raise it to a negative exponent, it's like saying y to that exponent over x to that exponent. So you flip it and then raise each of them to the exponent. So if we have x over y to the negative 8, it's going to be y to the 8 over x to the 8. Alright, and the final property is anything to the 0 power is always 1. Except 0 itself, but we won't be dealing with that at all. So even 83 to the 0 power is 1. Anything to the 0 power will be 1. And remember, whenever you're multiplying in, if you have a 1 there, you don't need it. 
the one only stays if that's the only thing in the top of a fraction, such as this case right here. So other than that, if you see a one anywhere, you don't need it. As my friend Zach Goulette will normally say, kill all ones. All right, now let's look at some examples. So here we have 3 x squared times 4 x cubed. So when you have the numbers in front, these are known as coefficients, you take the numbers in front and you multiply those first. So 3 times 4 will give us 12. Then, we look at the exponents. So we have x squared times x to the third. So remember, that's when you add the exponents. So that'll give us x to the 2 plus 3. So that'll give us, still 12 there, x to the fifth. And you don't have to always write this, this step out right here. If you know automatically 2 plus 3 is 5, you can just write 5. And that's the answer there. So 3x squared times 4x cubed will give us 12x to the fifth. Now let's look at this one. So here we have to multiply each thing separately. So here we have negative 6 and we have x, y squared, z cubed times 5 x to the fourth, y to the fifth, z to the sixth. So we have to multiply each thing separately. So first, the numbers. Negative six times five will give us negative 30. Then x times x to the fourth. One thing to note, if you have just x by itself, it's always to the first power, so x to the 1. So 1 plus 4 is 5, so that'll give us x to the fifth. Then we have y squared times y to the fifth, so 2 plus 5 is 7. So y to the seventh, and then z cubed times z to the sixth, three plus six is nine. So z to the ninth. All right, this one will take a little bit more time. So first we want to look at, we have a monomial being raised to an exponent and another monomial being raised to an exponent. So first, we need to raise each of these to, the, to their respective exponents. So to do that, we need to look at the exponents. So first we have negative 3 squared. So we raise each thing to the exponent. So negative 3 squared, well, negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. Then, x to the fourth squared, remember, when we have an exponent being raised to an exponent, you multiply them. So, x to the fourth squared will give us x to the eighth. Then, y cubed squared, again, multiply the exponents, so y to the sixth. Then, the other one. So, 2 cubed, that's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Then, x cubed, so it's just x cubed. And then y squared cubed. So again, multiply the exponents. 2 times 3 is again 6. So y to the 6th. Now, we're back to 
similar to the last problem, we need to multiply those two. So multiply each individually. So 9 times 8 is 72. x to the 8th times x cubed will give us x to the 11th. Remember, add the exponents. And y to the 6th times y to the 6th. 6 plus 6 is 12. So y to the 12th. So now let's look at some examples of dividing monomials. So just like with multiplying, with dividing, you do everything separately. So here we have 8 divided by 2, which will be 4. And then x to the 5th divided by x to the 3rd. So that's where we subtract the exponents. So 5 minus 3 will give us... 2. So x squared. So now let's look at this one. So first let's look at the numbers. We have 3 over 2. Can you nicely divide 3 over 2? No. It's a fraction, so you should leave it as a fraction. So just leave it as 3 over 2. Then, let's look at x. So here we have x to the fifth divided by x to the third. So 5 minus 3 is 2. So we have x squared. Now let's look at the y's. Here we have y squared divided by y to the seventh. So you would have to do 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So since it's a negative 5, you get rid of the negative and you put it on the bottom. So it becomes y to the fifth. So just a note, when you're dividing these, if the bigger number is on top, it stays on top. If the bigger number is on bottom, it stays on bottom. Make sense? Good. If not, please make sure to ask questions when you come to class, or even send me an email. So now let's look at this problem. We have x squared y over x negative 3 y to the fourth. So when you see a negative anywhere, if it's on top, bring it to the bottom. If it's on bottom, bring it to the top. So here we have x to the negative 3. So before we do anything, we want to take that and we want to rewrite this equation. So now we're going to have x squared times x cubed y divided by y to the fourth. See what we did there? We just took this x to the negative 3, we brought it up and got rid of the negative. So that's the first step. Then we look, x squared times x to the third will give us x to the fifth. And then y, which remember by itself we say that there's a 1 there. So y to the first divided by y to the fourth, 1 minus 4 is a negative 3. So it goes on bottom. So y to the third. All right, let's do one more example. So here we have 5 x to the fourth, y to the seventh, divided by 6, y squared, all raised to the negative 2. So remember when I said if you're raised to a negative exponent, first thing you do is flip this entire fraction. Flip it upside down. So that will give you six y squared over five x to the fourth y to the seventh squared. So that's the easiest thing to do first. Just take the negative and flip everything with it. Then you need to raise everything to the second power. 
So sit squared will give us 36. Y squared squared, remember add the exponents, y to the fourth. 5 squared is 25. X to the fourth squared, 4 times 2 is 8. And y to the seventh squared, 7 times 2 is 14. Now 30 sets over 25, that can't be reduced at all. So it's going to stay that way. 30 sets over 25. Then notice the x's. There's only x to the eighth on bottom. So it has to stay x to the eighth on bottom. Then y to the fourth divided by y to the fourteenth. So 4 minus 14 is negative 10, so that means it's y to the 10th on bottom. And that's our answer. All right, that's it for the lesson. Now time for the sponge. So I want you to simplify each expression. So first we are multiplying 5x to the 4th, y to the 3rd, and 6x squared y. Here, we're dividing 8, x to the 5th, y to the 3rd, and 10, x squared, y to the 7th. And on number 3, we've got 2x to the 4th over y to the 3rd, and we're raising it all to the negative 3rd power. Alright, that's it for the lesson today. Once again, please take notes on the entire lesson and attempt the sponge. Also, please remember to circle on the scale where you think you are at the end of the lesson after you attempt the sponge, just so I know where you are. And have a good night.